Okay. Yeah, right? Do you like it? I actually really do. Do you like the song? Yeah. This is what don't you do, Courtney? <laughs> What's your favorite song on the album? I'm you know, you. I think like this vibe is what I love. Yeah. You know, I I was introduced to you through Little Miss of Toby Bikini. Oh my god. Okay. But I love what you, where you've gone because I feel like it's <laughs> true to you. This is completely opposite from Miss of Toby Bikini. Well, it is, and that's what we've been. That's what I've been seeing from you for the last, you know, year is a really a true commitment to bringing who you really want to be out to show. I think who I really am. Yes. Though, right. So I have been like so immersed in creating this fictitious person. And it's because really I have so many insecurities mm -hmm. and I think like this new wave of like, you know, the empowering like Me Too movement and, you know, mental health, like, you know, that is getting more attention. And I feel like I can use my platform to not only like inspire other people, but also inspire myself mm -hmm. and, you know, learn to love myself more overall. So I'm going to take down the walls right yeah. that shield who i am and fucking start showing people the real me hell yeah and we're so excited about it corny because like you you've been showing us little tidbits of that you know as you've really grown into who you are but i think this platform this podcast is going to give us fans like me the chance to really get to know you thank you no, i was really. i was I first exposed to you on another podcast actually so kevin undergaro's podcast at tomorrow show yes i was a fan of that show and i loved your appearance on that show which one i think i listened to both <laughs> the first one or the last one i really enjoyed both of them thank you and i don't know if you had had much podcasting experience before but when we i work at after buzz guys my name is jeff of course we're here with courtney stott and this is her podcast yes but when I heard that, and when I heard you on the mic, I was like, this girl really does have a gift for radio. And that's when we as producers got thank really you. excited about the chance to get you on a mic. My goodness, thank you. No, I asked you the first time or last time, because the first time I was invited on, I was very much the, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, and then the second time I came on, I shocked Kevin, and he was like, what the hell, who the fuck is this girl? Like, I came in myself, uh -huh. and I think that that spoke to him, and, and so that is who I'm going to be sticking with from now on, you know, is, is, is who I really am. The good, the bad, the ugly. That's what we want. That's what we want on this show. Um, has it been scary for you to allow your true self to be seen? Fuck yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it has been so... Um, are my nipples hanging out? Is yeah. that what's going on? Speaking I have somebody, of... I have someone, it's like, hey, my nipples hanging out. Um, speaking of which... <laughs> Your true self, right? My true self, yeah. I mean, yeah. All, free the nipple. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for it. Thanks. Thank you, nipple police. <laughs> what was your question? You totally Just like, off. you know, it's that's not a small thing to make that decision to be like, this is really who I am. Yeah. You know, and all, yeah. of us, all of us are figuring out who that is. You know, we get to do it in real time on the show with mm -hmm. you, which is going to be so it's, awesome. I mean, it's, it's, it's a never-ending process. I think, like, getting to know who you are is something that is so scary, mm -hmm. especially to people who you know put up a front whether that's a celebrity which we do that a lot or somebody who goes and do a nine to five right, right. and feel like that if put on a suit and tie or or you know pantsuit and go in and be somebody they're not mm -hmm. so I think it's a struggle for so many people um, you know in and outside of Hollywood and it's something that needs to be touched upon more I could not agree more. And I think, like, in terms of this podcast, that's one of your huge goals, right? Like, self-love, empowerment. That's kind of what we're looking for at this. Yeah, and I think with this podcast, I'm also on a journey to self-discovery. Mm. And I feel like not only can people potentially, hopefully, learn from me and my mistakes and, and my good and my bad and even, you know, insides and outs of all of my crazy life, but um, I can learn something from my guests and and grow as a human being, mm -hmm. you know, and just have a place where it's just like you can vent and talk and leave and be like, holy shit, I can grow from this, this experience. I love that. And I feel the same way. I'm so excited. <laughs> Even just for this hour, I will say one thing I love about you, Courtney, is you've experienced more in the very short life you've lived than most people would live in three lifetimes, <laughs> which makes you an amazing podcast host. Yeah, I guess so. I feel like I have lived 20 lives, yeah. you know, by the age of 24. So I know a lot about a lot of things I probably shouldn't <laughs> at this age. Um, but then I don't know a lot of things that I should know hmm. at this age because I missed out on a huge chunk of that. But I think I know what a 95-year-old person knows, <laughs> right? But you forget. I don't oh, know. How are my teenagers? I forgot. 
That's my me. grandma's 95 and you know way more than her. That's what I'll say. I don't think she's experienced a lot of what you've experienced. So. <laughs> you would love my grandma though. We gotta I know, bring her on the show. I know, we should hang out. She's actually, she's awesome. Do you have grandparents or? Yeah, uh, well yeah, I, I have two late grandpas okay. and my both my grandmothers are still alive. Okay. And then I have a great grandma who's still kicking too. Still got a great grandma. <laughs> yeah, she's still nice. kicking. I would love to meet the Stodden grandparents. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Or maybe not. It sounds like no, no. They're 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 very sweet. Um, my grandma Keller is sweet. I haven't seen my grandparents though in a while. Yeah. So I think like that's part of also this this new chapter in my life. Like you know, I came to Hollywood. I immediately got famous, and I you know adopted this new persona. And in that process, I lost a lot of family. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say you know some I lost like you know um, physically and then emotionally as well. Um, but I think like now I'm working on not only myself discovering and growth in that process, but family is so freaking important. Yeah. Like, you know, and with this recent, you know, passing of freaking all these like little people, these young, you know, Mac Miller and everything, like Demi Lovato, like it's so important to have people around you who you can trust mm -hmm. and you know, that should be your family. Yeah. So I'm trying to rebuild that. I love that. Well, what an amazing opportunity for you with this show. It's interesting. I feel like in Hollywood, the term is like rebranding. How do you mm. feel about that term? Do you like that? Or You know, I feel like I, I, I don't, I mean, I get the rebranding part because, you know, it's, it's, you know, you're, you're a celebrity and it's a brand, mm -hmm. but we're also human beings. And I feel like that term rebranding is a little... It's like rediscovering, right. like, it's but kind of corporate. I feel like, yeah, I feel like for me, I am discovering, Cool. you know, I am branding mm -hmm. and you know, I'm only freaking 24 years old. So I don't feel like I'm like 50 saying, Oh, I'm going to rebrand myself now. Mm -hmm. You know, like I am coming into my own now mm -hmm. and this is who I really am. So it's a fresh start, but I wouldn't think of it as rebranding necessarily. Cause I never really had the chance. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I think fresh start is a much healthier term you know yes. what I mean I, I there's so much of an instinct in Hollywood to like corporatize everything and make every turn everything into a hashtag I right know. so it's our rebrand and it takes away the humanity out of what's actually happening it's kind of political yeah you know it's, like yeah it takes it takes the humanity out of it um and we've seen these amazing fresh starts from other celebrities and I'd sort of love to talk with you about like are these models that you're interested in sort of you know modeling your you fresh start off mm -hmm. I don't know I mean like I think I look at someone like Lindsay Lohan, who I really like. I don't know. How do you feel about Lindsay? Okay. I like Lindsay. Obviously, Mean Girls. Okay, yeah. one over. Right. For life, but she recently put her foot in her mouth. Uh oh. I'm, I okay. might have missed this. You gotta she tell me. She put her foot in her mouth, and now she has like athlete's face. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, but when she came out and said the women of the Me Too movement are weak. Oh, I didn't see this. Okay, and then later apologized for saying something like that um dude Lindsay, i mean she deep throated that foot yeah. you do not go out and say sexual survivors you know these victims are weak you can't you can't say that because and i am so passionate about it because i'm a part of the me too movement right i've been you know sexually assaulted twice um could have been a hand more a handful more times but thankfully i got out of the situation mm -hmm. but these women are not weak. Of course not. It <laughs> takes so much bravery to come out. So I like her for her, you know, branding, <laughs> rebranding, whatever. But as as for some for somebody to say that, I mean, it's gonna take me a while to get over that comment. Of course, I that's she's undoing so much of the good grace. Did did, did you know this? You didn't know. I didn't this. even hear, which you is bad, because that shows what the media is choosing to the story that they're choosing to tell. That's wild, and it is a bummer because. <laughs> I was just getting back on the Lohan train. Where are you? And yeah, she's just backed it up five miles. Why were you getting back on it? I feel the same way. Why'd you get off and then why are you back on yeah. it? Yeah, so Lindsay Lohan, <laughs> I totally agree. You might be too young for this, but The Parent Trap, did you see her? I've seen The Parent Trap. Okay, nice. Yeah, okay. And then of course Mean Girls is like our generation's, yeah, yeah. you know, Breakfast yeah. Club. It's so good. Um, but I do feel like we did lose her. You know, we kind of lost her and she's been known to put her foot in her mouth, but she got her fresh start in Dubai, uh -huh. kind of resetting. I was like, right. good for her. I, I right. only want the best for everyone. Uh -huh. Shouldn't we all? Of course. But to hear that, it just sets it sets my goodwill with her back so far. Does it really? It does, because it's like, 
really, for someone who's been so viciously, whether or not she's been sexually assaulted, I feel like she's been assaulted by the media. She's been assaulted by paparazzi. Her story, you know, whoever's responsibility it was, we did lose her. And I would blame the media as part of the reason we saw her downfall. Mm -hmm. So for her to blame, to victim blame like that, when she was so clearly a victim of, you know, the media, I don't understand it. I don't know, dude. I I get the media, you know, can 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 have its, you know, fake media and all that and, and be bullies themselves sometimes. But I don't necessarily think that that could turn somebody into a bully. So I think, you know, maybe this is who she is. Yeah, I don't know. Right. You know, and she felt like she had to apologize afterwards. So is that how, you know, sincere is that apology? Right. So I don't know. I don't know. But those are my thoughts on Lindsay.